Turning now to your community focus, the governor's budget proposal is now out and here to react to some of his priorities, House Minority Leader Mike Chippendale. Thanks so much for being here. Hi, Kim. Thank you. So we heard the governor's State of the State address on Tuesday. Afterwards, Senate Minority Leader Jessica De La Cruz gave the official GOP response. I'm curious, when you listen to his speech about his priorities, including how he's going to spend some of that surplus money, what stood out to you? Um, you know, there were a lot of uh, vague proposals, mm -hmm. but where we saw some uh, specificity, housing, Mm -hmm. education. Um, I'm cautiously going to watch these things to see if they if they go in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a plan like this under that uh, under those circumstances, there were not a lot of details. So the details are really what's going to dictate, I think, the success or failure of any given initiative. So time will certainly tell uh, how effective these initiatives are going to be. What did you think about some of his proposals to give Rhode Islanders a little bit of relief? We're all dealing with inflation, the rising yeah. cost of living. He wants to freeze the gas tax and bring down the sales tax a smidge, among other things. What are your thoughts on those proposals? Yeah, um, you know, freezing the gas tax, it has to be phased out. We've mm. already made a plan as a state to migrate to electric vehicles. Gas tax is disappearing. It's just a pragmatic approach to start it now. That makes sense. Um, sales tax relief, you're never going to hear me um, uh, poo-poo a, 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 a tax reduction. That's always beneficial. Whether or not that's the right place can be argued. I think there are other areas that may have been more effective, but I will not... Uh, um, uh, fail to embrace a tax cut. Okay, so what about your own party's legislative priorities? What are you hoping to accomplish with your caucus this Yeah, so first and foremost, we, we have really placed our focus on education because it's our opinion that education impacts all of these other areas that we're talking about, housing, jobs, you know, everything that, that we have to deal with as a state. If we start with a, a fundamentally great educational system, those things will just get better. Uh, so we are focused on, on education. I know that the state as a whole is, so it's a very dynamic process and we're hopeful that some of our initiatives will, will get traction. I know it's always a little bit of an uphill battle because it's a small caucus. How many of you this year? Seven. Seven. Okay, so do you think that that's enough to really push that boulder up the hill to get some of your things accomplished? Yeah, it, it, you know, our ideas and the success of our ideas really aren't measured by the number of members we have. They're measured by the validity of the idea. Mm. And so what we see is not necessarily an ado uh, the adoption of our idea, but we see that our ideas will refract current policy directions. And frankly, that's the value that we bring to the process. We've got about 30 seconds left. Uh, housing has been a major issue, yeah. and we know that uh, the governor just named Stephen Pryor to be the next housing secretary. Do you think he's the right pick? Uh, you know, as you know, I was critical of Saul. I felt that he did not, he had, he had academic experience in housing, but he didn't have practical experience. And that was a deal breaker for me. Um, uh, Mr. Pryor does not have any experience with housing and all I can do is wish him the best. Okay, fair enough. All right. House Minority Leader Mike Chippendale, thanks so much for being here Thank today. Thank you, Kim.